I've got AMAT, A-M-A-T here on the screen. That is Applied Materials, Semiconductor Space. If you've been paying any attention to anything I do, you know I'm in the semiconductor space and, and constantly trading the names there. And so we've got interesting breakout of the trend channel here um, that we've been in for a while, right? 50 days, been moving up, providing nice support. And we've been rejecting pretty consistently, and I say we, AMAT, A-M-A-T, has been rejecting pretty consistently against this trend line. Broke above it on a huge move last week. Really interesting that it's ahead of earnings, right? Like that looks like the candle you'd see on a really strong earnings report, right? And uh, so I thought that was interesting. Strong volume on that move, clearly in the overbought territory. So if it kind of holds and then powers higher on earnings, um, all bets are off. Like it, I would be really impressed there. Um, and if not, if we get a little bit of a rejection, that's actually probably more where the trade will be at. Because I don't know, you know, if you want to jump in on a big move higher at these extended levels after earnings. But if we get a rejection here and a little bit of a cool down, if it doesn't, you know, sell off really hard and get to the bottom of the channel, it might just get back underneath the upper trend and then give you an opportunity to take a short position. So it's kind of where my head is, but, you know, my heart is hoping it goes higher. So what do you think, Chef? <laughs> So this one looks a bit like the DraftKings chart I was looking at the other day, kind of peaking up above this channel. Um, so that's interesting to see. Obviously, completely different stocks, of course. Um, but yeah, I'm in agreement with you. I think upside is a little bit of a no trade zone for me. Um, but if we do post kind of negative earnings or you know, misguidance or something like that, coming back down, that's where I kind of you know have my eyes on the stock, on the chart. Um, and that's where the levels are kind of come and play for me. But yeah, nothing really much to add on this. Obviously, RSI is still pretty high. Uh, we've got all that volume down in the middle there. So yeah, it's, it's doing very, very well. Is it, do you reckon it's just kind of following like SMCI and that kind of thing, that kind of move that NVIDIA is doing? That, yeah. Yeah, yeah these, these moves be, in the right? space, they're definitely all trying to keep up with NVIDIA, it feels like. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's it. That's my thoughts on this one. Yeah, I'll, I'll, If it comes down, I'll, I'll think about it then. That support level, by the way, if it does sell off hard in the, the 50 day might come up and hit right at the same level is 164.21. And so if we do get some selling, that's where I'll be looking to potentially add. What do you think, Kay? So the implied move on this generally is about 3 3 to 4%, right? So what is that? Huh? 1.8 to 4 about $6 you're looking at plus minus, right? That's on the supplied material. I'm looking at their uh, earnings as well. So they have not missed earnings since like three, four, five, six. Last six quarters, they have not missed a single revenue or EPS. They have done a beat on all last six. So... Uh, assuming this would be the seventh one coming in. They did have a lot of down revisions by the analysts, so I'm not sure if that has to play any role. But I would agree, if you are not already in this trade that you're hoping to pull it off, uh, you would rather wait for the earnings to end and then uh, probably see if it comes back in that channel uh, to trade. Um, I also looked at the put-to-call. Uh, the volatility is pretty high, it's 60%, and expiration is 0.68, but so very positive. Uh, there's a lot more call options on this one as opposed to put. So you may get a lot of premiums, uh, especially if you're selling calls. Ah, very nice. Right? Uh, but if you're buying calls, then you are definitely paying a, a very rich premium, um, you know, the cost that you'll be paying from your pocket. So maybe you can do a spread on this one to hedge that, right? Spread could be an opportunity. Yep, I think that's a good call. I For think the, that uh, those juiced, uh, you know, the juiced premiums are, are what you're getting at there, right? Kind of offset that. Yeah, because most of the uh, charts I'll show are similar, like this. You know, even your RSI is almost like above seventy right now. Yeah. Yeah, and that's that's what it's actually tough to trade. So you know, for those of you that are out there looking for trades and kind of feeling like it's getting harder and harder to find something that looks like a great opportunity, like you might have already missed it. That's what the charts look like right now. <laughs> like the yeah. majority of them, right, guys? Like, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but oh, I, I agree with you on this one. Yeah, and I'm trying to come up with trade ideas for a newsletter and for my newsletter, and I don't want to put out anything that's you know super high risk and and just just to put something out there so yeah uh it's hard to find them and, and this one right here i think could set up nicely either way but like like Kay mentioned you know the options are expensive so pay attention to that 